Well, folks, the mission to blow up Marco Reactor 5 was a resounding success. Now, right about now, Cloud and the gang are probably on their way back to 7th Heaven to have a good knees up and to toast to the victory over Shinra. Ah! It's not been a good 24 hours, mate, has it? Hey up YouTube and welcome back to the channel and part 3 of my Final Fantasy 7 No Random Encounters Challenge. Rather than plummeting to a very gruesome death, Cloud falls through the roof of a church in the Sector 5 slums, where apparently a flower bed is the key to eternal life. It's here in this church where we meet the flower girl we ran into in the aftermath of the first Marco reactor bombing. Although rather unsurprisingly, Cloud hasn't got a f***ing clue who she is. She proceeds to tell us her name, and seeing as how the remake has warped my perception of how things were pronounced in the original game, we opt for a combination of the two. A Shinra suit called Reno turns up, and it appears as though he's wanting Aerisith to oblige and come quietly. She's not having any of that though, so she asks Cloud to be a bodyguard and to take her home. Cloud does an excellent job of this, by not only letting the Shinra security guard shoot her down onto the floor of the church, but also forces her to fight them with a metal pole. Once out of the church, and Aerisith has figured out what Cloud used to do for a job, creepy, we make our way through Sector 5. We encounter a bloke who are sick, and even though we don't have two guilt to rub together, we leave the young lad's savings in his drawer. Come on. Not an animal. Despite all the Marco pollution in the slums of Midgar, it seems only right that Aerisith lives in the only green belt in the city, so we raid her garden for some goodies before heading on inside. No sooner have we stepped through the door though, Aerisith's mom Elmira tells us to f*** off, but we ignore her completely so that we can go upstairs and have a nice kip. Rather than risk Aerisith getting into more trouble, Cloud decides to make his way back to Sector 7 alone so as not to with Aerisith in full tow again, we eventually end up in the park. Despite only travelling through one screen, she's tired and wants to take a break. She then mentions Soldier again, and that her first boyfriend was first class, just like Cloud. Before they can finish the conversation though, Tifa appears on a chocobo carriage, and it's making its way to Wall Market. Curious, they decide to follow her. Ah, Wall Market. The seedy part of the Sector 6 slums, ran by the sleazy Don Corneo. On arrival, we learn that Tifa has decided to whore herself out at the local brothel, and the only way we can get to her is by chucking on a dress and a wig. Razors, start your engines, and may the best soldier win. After getting all the required items, oh, isn't he cute? We enter the whorehouse to find Tifa. Upon entering the sex dungeon, we finally find Tifa who explains that the only reason that she's there is to squeeze some information out of the Don regarding Sector 7. With Tifa back in the party, we make our way to the Don's chambers, where he decides which of us he's going to f*** tonight. And sadly, Tifa and Aerisith are told to sashay away. After telling the Don we've actually got the hots for Barrett, the cavalry arrive just in time to quiz the Don about the strange goings on in Sector 7. We find out that Don Corneo has been paid by Shinra to expose Avalanche's hideout in Sector 7, and they're plotting to break the pillar supporting the plate above the slums below. Just as we're about to make our grand escape, we're then sent hurtling down into the sewers to face the third boss of the game. Hey up YouTube and welcome back to part 3 of our Final Fantasy 7 No Random Encounters Boss Rush Boss Rush esque challenge um so as you've just seen um we've gone through all of that um spieling wall market we've uh, met uh, Ares and um yeah we are now we have just been plunged into the depths of the sewers um to take on uh, Don Corneo's um, little pet that he likes to keep down here. Um, as we do at this stage, so we'll just go into the menu and we will just have a look at the loadouts for the characters. Again, we're still pretty early on, so it's going to be relatively straightforward. Um, so if we just check out what we've done to Cloud. So Cloud is actually the only one that's got joined slots in his materia at this point. Um, and we're gonna need to be able to cure everybody at once should we need to I mean I don't know if don't think we will but should we need to we want that option so I've got restore and all on his buster sword um, I've also given him cover as well um, just because he's got the most health out of everybody and um, it'll help raise his uh, limit gauge a little bit more uh, if we move on to Tifa again there's nothing really much else to say we've given her lightning and we've given uh, Aeris uh, we've given her I um, ice and fire. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's wake these bitches up and um, we'll go into the next boss fight. Okay, here we go. Right then, uh, Cloud. No, you're just gonna have to attack Tifa. You're okay. Let's do bolt with you and 
fire. Did I just click on ice? Did I just seriously click on ice? What a pudding. What a pudding. Uh, see if it's got a limit break. Uh, that was rubbish. Uh, we'll fire. There we go. Fire this time. What I like about this boss as well, uh, app, uh, apps as it's called in this game, um, is he will, um, when he does that sui tsunami, he will just attack himself, which will take considerable uh, health off him. Unless he does it that way, in which we take more, as you can see. Um, Tifa's got yet yeah, another limit break. Uh, Cloud, uh, you can limit break as well. Um, I'm probably, what I was saying, I might not have to heal. I'm going to have to heal. So we will, uh, after that braver, we will heal. Uh, Tifa, you can your of fire. Oh, I didn't even really mean to do that because she's just got a limit now as well for healing wind. I completely forgot about her limit break. Right, uh, you can bolt again, Tifa. You're just going to use it just to say that you've used it. Um, Seems like a little bit of a waste, but we're not we're not going to get to use it again for a bit anyway. So, God, that's three limit breaks for uh, Tifa in this. Gotta be nearly dead now, surely. I always quite like it. If he does this and he kills himself, is he going to kill himself? Yes, he is. <laughs> He's going to kill himself. Brilliant. That is apps done. There we go. Loads of XP because they are all so ridiculously underleveled. And we've got a Phoenix down back. Maybe that Phoenix down that we uh, that we had to use on um, the Airbuster in the previous episode. Don't give up. So, that's the end of this one, guys. Uh, we're now going to make our way back through the sewers, through the train graveyard, and make a very lame attempt to try and stop the uh, Sector 7 pillar from falling. Um, I'm not quite sure how that's going to go, but uh, yeah, thank you ever so much. Um, if you have enjoyed watching, please uh, give this video uh, a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel for uh, more videos just like this one. My name is Matt, better known as The Yorkshire Gamer, and thank you very much for watching.